So what is culture hack? Because you mentioned that a couple of times. Yeah, I, th- this is, yeah, this is where I came up with it. I, so many companies would come through, everybody from a college entrepreneur to soup kitchens to Procter & Gamble and Coca-Cola, and they would always leave a little overwhelmed saying, oh my God, culture's everything. It's hiring, it's interviewing, it's innovation, it's leadership, all those things. Where the heck do I start? And then it hit me that if, if culture's a network, like a computer network, then how do you change a network? And I realized it's not the network designer. It's not the the IT person. The person who changes a computer network the fastest is a hacker. Mm -hmm. And they don't even, they're not even authorized because sometimes people say, you know what, I'm not the CEO. How do I create a culture change? Well, a hacker, it literally doesn't have the authority to be there on the network, yet they get in, make a huge change. And so I thought, what if we could apply that? To culture, and I realized that if you think about it, what does a cult, what does a hacker do? A hacker looks for a vulnerability in the system. A vulnerability I define in culture as a place where it could really go off the rails. So, for example, um, the interview that that is a very very vulnerable place in culture because you could bring somebody in who's amazing for your company, who who solves all these problems, makes your life easy, or that person could look really good on on paper and in the interview, and then you let them in. And they do something horrible, maybe even gross negligence or harassment or something. And it, it, could, it could literally tank your company. So that's why you find vulnerable moments like that within culture. And you say, okay, how do I hack it? So the same way that Thomas Edison would hack light bulbs by trying this. No, it didn't work. Trying mm-hmm. this. No, it didn't work. You try these different kind of things, these culture hacks to experiment with. So for example, at Zappos, one of the things we did was said, okay, if people can have a lot of customer service experience, but might not be great at, at service. What's a question to ask to determine if they're really going to be good at service? And so to figure that out, one of the questions is, tell me about a time when you help somebody out when you didn't have to, because then you can tell if somebody loves to be of service. If they love to be, you can hire them for the role. It's not about the experience. So that's what I mean about hacking is find vulnerable moments, moments of frustration, moments where it can go off the rails. Um, There's there's things like first time uh, conversation with an employee. That's a, a vulnerable moment. And in each of these, if you think like a hacker and think, okay, how can I engineer this moment, this experience to get what I want, then it has a huge impact because that's what a hack is as well, is it finds a vulnerable moment, but it also is uses a high leverage tool. What does high leverage mean? It means very, very little input, very, very little investment, but huge output. So we can even talk more about those questions in the interview because that's a tiny, tiny input. You just change a little question here and there, and it radically changes the vector of the his, of the future of your company because you'll get the right person in there. That's fascinating. 